So let us continue our study of uh, the properties of uh, Laplace transforms. Now in this lecture, I will make this assumption. So this is an assumption for this lecture. So we assume that our functions f t will be piecewise continuous on the interval 0 infinity and of exponential order. So we remember from our uh, sufficient conditions for the existence of Laplace transforms that if a function is piecewise continuous on this interval 0 infinity with 0 included and it is if it is of exponential order then the Laplace transform exists. So this uh, assumption will make uh, many of our uh, technical points for the analysis of uh, integrals easier and so we have made this simplifying assumptions. So most of the functions that we will see in this, uh, in this course will be of this type. So we are not losing too, uh, losing too much um, from this assumption. So let us see our first property. So the first property is behavior, behavior of Laplace transforms at s equal to infinity. So this let me write this as a theorem. So if we write f s to be the Laplace transform of the function f t, then the limit as s goes to plus infinity of f s is 0. So let us see a proof for this statement. So note that it is sufficient to show that the limit as s goes to plus infinity of the modulus of f s is equal to 0. This is due to the squeeze theorem for limits. So here we have minus mod of f s is less than or equal to f s is less than or equal to mod of f s. And so if the limit of modulus of f s goes to 0, then this part goes to 0 as s goes to plus infinity and this part also goes to 0 as s goes to plus infinity. So the middle one also goes to 0 as s goes to plus infinity. So this is the application of squeeze theorem. So now by definition of the modulus of uh, our improper Riemann integral, so this is simply the definition of the Laplace transform of f t. So this is just f s. Now because this we have assumed that uh, f t is of exponential order this limit exists. So we can put it inside. So they can, we can put the absolute value of uh, this term inside the limit as r goes to infinity. So we can write limit as r goes to infinity modulus of the integral 0 to r f t exponential minus s t dt. Now we know that because our f t is of exponential order, so suppose that there exist constants m alpha and t naught says that modulus of f t is less than or equal to m e to the power alpha t for all t in the region t greater than or equal to t naught. This is just the exponential order property of this function f t. So now we can evaluate this limit as r goes to infinity and we have already seen it that it equals m over s minus alpha. So one can uh, solve directly 
So the limit as r goes to infinity modulus of integral uh, ft exponential minus st dt is in fact less than or equal to m over s minus alpha. So this is for s greater than alpha. So now we get that our limit as s tends to plus infinity of modul modulus of fs. So we have that this is equal to this is equal to the limit as s goes to plus infinity limit r goes to plus infinity modulus of sorry so this should be r here 0 to r ft exponential minus st dt and now we know that this is less than or equal to m of m over s minus alpha for all s greater than alpha uh, with the limit s plus infinity this is simply 0. So therefore we have shown that the limit as s goes to plus infinity modulus of f s is 0. So again by this application of the squeeze theorem that I said before this is also equal to 0. So for any function uh, which is piecewise continuous and of exponential order we have that the Laplace transform must go to 0 as s tends to plus infinity. Now the second property is the Laplace transform formula for the Laplace transform of T f t. So this is a new function g t. Note that if f t is chosen to be piecewise continuous and of exponential order, if f t is piecewise continuous, I will just write p w c for short, and of exponential order, then t f t is also piecewise continuous and of exponential order. So we know that from the sufficient condition of Laplace transforms that the Laplace transform of g t exists and now we will try to give a formula in terms of the Laplace transform of f t. So this theorem states that the Laplace transform g s so if we write g s as the Laplace transform of g t then g s is given by the formula minus the derivative of the Laplace transform of f s where f capital f s this is capital f s is the Laplace transform of f t. So let us see how we can show this. So remember that our Laplace transform, so capital G s which is the Laplace transform of G t is given by 0 to infinity t f t exponential minus s t d t. Now we have that cap capital F of s which is the Laplace transform of f t is by definition 0 to infinity f t exponential minus s t d t. Now if we write d over d s of f s the derivative of f s then this is d over d s of this integral 0 to infinity f t exponential minus s t d t. Now if we can make these integral sign and the derivative um, if we can interchange these two operations. So suppose that we can interchange these two operations d over d s of f t exponential minus s t. So this is a partial derivative now d t 
if if this is true if this is true then our our result is immediate because we have this partial derivative is nothing but minus t f t exponential minus s t d t. So, this implies that the deriv uh, the integral of f t exponential minus s t d t is minus the derivative of f s and this is the left hand side is g s. Now, the only thing is to show that this operation the interchange of the two operations of derivative and integral is allowed and in fact by our standing assumptions on the function f t um, which we have assumed that it is piecewise continuous and of exponential order this integral this interchange of uh, integral and derivatives is in fact allowed but for the moment we will not go into the details um, if time permits i will write down a sufficient condition under which integral and derivatives can be interchanged note that one can easily give counter example counter example counter example where interchange of uh, integral and derivative is not allowed in interchange of integral and derivative fails. So, a standard example is this function f y given by integral 0 to infinity sin of x y over x dx. Note that we are integrating over x and so we are left with a function of y. Now, if you write the integral with the partial derivative with respect to y of sin x y over x dx, then this is simply the integral 0 to infinity cos of x y dx and we know that for any value of y this integral does not exist for any y. This is a divergent integral an uh, improper Riemann integral which does not exist. So, if you take the derivative partial derivative inside then the integral does not exist. However, we know that integral 0 to infinity sin x y over x dx this can be rewritten as integral 0 to infinity sin u over u du. So, here we have made the change u equal to y x. So, d u equals y times d x. <coughs> so, we get from here we get after this change of variables from uh, x to u we get sin u um, over. So, we get this integral sin u over u d u and we will see later that this is in fact a convergent integral uh, it exists as an improper Riemann integral and in fact one can show that this value is pi by 2 and we will show this later on using Laplace transform techniques. So, we see that we cannot always interchange the integral and derivative sign, but there are sufficient condition conditions under which you can do this and I will write them later on and you will see that if f t is a function of exponential order and it is if it is piecewise continuous on 0 infinity then it will satisfy that sufficient condition under which you can 
in, uh, interchange the derivative and integral signs. So, which says that this is the multiplication multiplication by t to the power n. So, we try to compute the Laplace transform of t to the power n f t in terms of the Laplace transform of f t itself and the theorem here states that Laplace transform of t to the power n f t at s is minus 1 to the power n. So, here n is a positive integer, n is a positive integer. So, minus 1 to the power n, the nth derivative dn by over dsn of fs. So, if n equal to 1, we have already seen that this is a this is true because you will only have minus 1 and the derivative of f s and one can general generalize this using an induction technique. So, proof is by induction on the on the power n on the exponent n and I will leave this as an exercise. So, this is an exercise for you check this formula. You can assume that when f t is of uh, exponential order and piecewise continuous, then you can interchange the integral and derivative for the Laplace transforms. So, let us see an example. So, first let us consider the Laplace transform of t sin t. So, this is from our previous property minus derivative of the Laplace transform of sin t and this is the we know already what it is. So, at s we have 1 over s square plus 1. So, you get minus and then you have minus 1 over s square plus 1 whole square and then 2 s. So, you get 2 s over s square plus 1 whole square and this is valid for s greater than 0. So, if you multiply by t, you can differentiate once and put a minus sign uh, at the front and you get the formula for the Laplace transform of t times that function.